to Shia Life Ministries welcomes you in the name of Yahweh our God and his son, Yeshua, the Messiah. We present sound wisdom for a successful walk, taking the light of the word to the world, edifying, equipping, and empowering disciples and apostles of Yeshua, the Messiah. I want to say thank you for being a part of today's ministry. Now, we asked and answered three questions last time. One, does Yahweh our God still speak to people today? The answer is yes. Question two, do you really believe you can hear Yahweh's voice? Again, the answer is yes. Third question, then why do so many people doubt and deny that he speaks and that you can hear him? The answer is because of intentional or unintentional misreading and misleading of what scripture teaches, which is why we're talking about, <clears throat> pardon me, how you can recognize, respond to, and release his voice as you get a clear, accurate, relevant, and edifying understanding of learning to hear God's voice. Today, we're going to look at three of the 12 ways that Yahweh speaks and communicates his voice. His voice I also refer to as his instruction, direction, and wisdom. As we look at them, remember Yahweh says, I'm Yahweh. I don't change. When he says he doesn't change, he's referring to his person, his purpose, and his perspective. Regarding his person, that means being outside matter, space, and time, nothing in matter, space, and time causes his person to change. And changing his mind about something doesn't mean he's changing his character. He doesn't change. Regarding his purpose, his goal for humanity doesn't change. Like when a global positioning satellite or GPS reroutes the destination reroutes your car as you're going somewhere, the destination remains the same. You just may take another path to get to that same place. Thirdly, his perspective. Yahweh's perspective of humanity is consistent. He knows that there are some people who wholeheartedly want to partner with him in service. There are others who half-heartedly work with him sometimes and other times not so much. And then there are those who have no heart toward Yahweh, and they work actually to oppose working with him. I want you to keep this verse in mind, 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. And it tells us that Yahweh's eyes roam throughout the earth to show himself strong for those who are wholeheartedly devoted to him. Why is it so important to learn to hear the voice of Yahweh our Elohim? Why do we need to hear God's voice? One reason, Romans 8, 14 tells us clearly, for all those led by God's spirit are God's sons and daughters. So if you're saying you're a child of God, if you're claiming that, if you're proclaiming that, then you need to know that you are being led by his spirit. So then how's he going to lead you? I doubt it's by grabbing your hand physically and then pulling you around. He's going to lead us by his spirit. In John 16, verse 13, we read, when the spirit of truth comes, he'll guide you into all truth. So what is the truth? Psalm 119, verse 60 tells us, all of your words, our father's words, are truth. Every one of your righteous ordinances endures forever. What he says lasts. So how does this work? He's going to lead you with instructions, directions, and wisdom by his spirit. In Ezekiel 36, verse 27, we, re we are reminded, I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Statutes are prescriptions for life. He says, and you'll be careful to observe my ordinances, that is, my judgments or my decisions about doing certain things. His statutes and ordinances have his instruction, direction, and wisdom in them. So I guess the question is, how does he get those things to us? 
How does he communicate his voice to us? That's why we need to learn how to do this. It's, it's vitally important for us as believers to hear, know how, learn to hear his voice. We're going to quickly review the four keys we started with last time in hearing Yahweh's voice. We find them in Habakkuk chapter 2, the first two verses. Habakkuk is writing, I'll stand at my guard post and station myself on the watchtower. I'll keep watch to see what he will say to me. Then Yahweh answered me and said, write down the vision and inscribe it clearly on tablets. The four keys to hearing Yahweh's voice are stillness, quiet the noise around you. You know, there may be distractions and things going on, but you want to kind of filter that out for that moment. Second, seek vision as you're praying. You want to see what he has to say. Spontaneity. We recognize God's voice, his instruction, direction, and wisdom as spontaneous thoughts and pictures that light upon our minds. And fourth, and I'm telling you, you won't forget what he said when you scribe it. Write down the flow of thoughts and pictures that light upon your mind. I need to note something about hearing and listening. They're not quite the same thing. Hearing is an involuntary, unintentional, and unconscious event. Let's say you're reading a book and then you hear a crash or a clap or a squeaking sound, right? Or Charlie Brown's teacher, wah, 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 wah. You're just hearing things. But to listen, it's a voluntary, intentional, and consciously performed action. So to go from hearing the sound to listening, you have to choose to pay attention. Like, check on what made the crash, the clap, or the squealing sound, or, you know, the wah, 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 you still may tune it out. But listening to hear Yahweh's voice requires both sight and sound. You may remember Moses was watching his father-in-law's sheep. He saw a bush was on fire, but it wasn't burning. Then he heard a voice and chose to turn to see what it was. He could have chose to run away. I'm thinking many of us might have done that, but he chose to turn and see what was going on. Yahweh knew then he had his attention. In John 5, Verses 19 and 20, Yeshua answers and tells a group of people he's talking to, truly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. He says, I'm not here working independently. Mm -mm. I don't do anything on my own unless it's something I see the father doing. I see the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he's doing, and the Father will show him greater works than these, so you will marvel. Understand this. The Father wants to show us things as well. But the question is, are we listening with our ears and our eyes? So let's take a look at three of the 12 ways the Father speaks. We're going to look at how he speaks through scripture, through an audible voice, or through his spirit. Let's begin with hearing God through scripture. Yahweh speaks through scripture. According to 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuke, for correcting, and for training in righteousness, so that the man or woman of God, the child of God, may be complete. Complete means, or perfect means, mature, equipped for every good work. Yahweh didn't dictate his word. Some people say, well, every word is God's word, so you have to believe every single thing. No, what he did was he had people to write, and sometimes he said, write down what you see, write down what you hear, write down what you understand. And if he wanted it in scripture, then he said, yep, that's going to stay. Man, how did he do that? Well, that's in his job description and not mine. In Psalm verses 1 
chapter, the first Psalm verses one and two, it says, blessed is the person who doesn't walk in the counsel of the, un, of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law or Torah of Yahweh, that is his instruction, direction, and wisdom. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He does it because he wants the instruction, the direction, and the wisdom that comes from God that helps him navigate through life, helps him navigate so he doesn't walk in bad counsel, doesn't stand with people who refuse to obey God, and he doesn't sit with people that make fun of what God has spoken. As we read the Bible, Yahweh will show you who he is, how he interacts with people, and what he wants you to know, believe, and how you and I should behave. Very important component in reading and understanding the con uh, reading the Bible is understanding the context that something is written in. A lot of people say, all I need is the Bible. Well, um, it's a very good start, but because the Bible is an Eastern book written in the Hebrew language, sometimes we may need to consult some other information to help make sure we're not misreading or, or being misled by a particular passage. So sometimes we may need to research the Hebrew language in which scripture was initially written and spoken, the nomadic culture of the Hebrew people, and the geography of where various events took place. Those things don't take us from scripture. They help us understand scripture more clearly, accurately, relevantly, and edifies us even more. I'd say better than 80% of what you and I need to know is in the Bible. Back when I was a younger believer, we used to go around, I want to know the will of God. Oh, what is the will of God for my life? Well, reading the Bible will give you probably about 80% of what that is through precept, direct steps on what to do, through principles, things that we learn through other things, or through the practice of what someone did. We learn things to do or not to do. The rest, when we don't get that 80% there, like, should I buy this car? Should I get this house? Should I date that person? Should I marry that person? Those, sometimes he uses one of his other ways to clearly get that message across to us. Yahweh sometimes will speak through an audible voice. Yes, I pause but not today. Yes, today. In Exodus 20, verse 1, he speaks to an entire assembly of people, right? It reads, then God spoke all these words, saying, and he began to give them the covenant statements we call the Ten Commandments, but the Ten Covenant statements, he wanted them to know that if they were going to keep his covenant, this is what they were going to keep, and they would have a binding relationship, a covenant. In Exodus chapter 34, verse 6, Yahweh passed by in front of him, him being Moses, and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, compassionate and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in faithfulness and truth. Moses wasn't just hearing this or feeling this. He was hearing it with his ears. The father was speaking to him audibly. And in our prior session, we saw how he called four times to a, a young man by the name of Samuel in 1 Samuel 3.10. Yahweh came and stood and called as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. This was not just in his head. There was an interaction that he was, that he was going through. Now, let me say this. I remember... I was going to do something that I probably shouldn't have been doing. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm planning and preparing. And, and, and I know that 1 John 1, 9 says, God will forgive you if you do anything you shouldn't do. Well, as I got closer to the time I was going to do something I shouldn't have been doing, I heard with my ear very clearly, don't do it. I'm like, what just happened here? Now, I read a little Bible back then, but I'm like, what just happened here? Suffice it to say, I heeded the instruction and said, okay, I don't know if I want to hear something like that again or not. Have I heard anything since then? There have been two other occasions 
But this time, because I was moving in the right direction or kind of wondering about something. But I heard on at least three occasions an audible voice that I know wasn't myself or someone around me. And it took me by surprise initially because I was taught he didn't do that anymore. That's not the case. That's not typically the way he communicates today. He can because he has and he hasn't changed. It's just what he chooses to do. And just because he doesn't choose this method to speak to you or someone that you know only means he's choosing to use a different method, not that he can't do it. Besides, the first group of people who heard his voice in Exodus chapter 20, they said, we don't want him talking to us again. That voice was too much for us. Moses, you talk to him, tell us what he said, and we'll listen to you. So people want to say, yeah, I want to hear his voice. Uh, maybe you do, and might be more than you anticipated. A third way that Yahweh speaks is by his spirit. In John 14, 26, we read, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you all of all things that I said. We learned earlier in Ezekiel 36, 27, that Yahweh will put his spirit within you and cause you to walk in his statutes, that is, his prescriptions for life. And you'll be careful to observe his, ordin his ordinances, those decisions that he makes. His spirit is going to lead us according to his instructions, directions, and wisdom. We also know that as his Torah. That's how he's leading and guiding us. Some people say, we're no longer under the law. Then I'd like to know how you're being guided as a believer. I'm asking the question because this is what scripture seems to clearly tell us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it reminds us that all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. How can you be led if you don't hear the instructions? Yeshua says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. In place of the word voice, you can always put instruction, direction, and wisdom. Yahweh's spirit, the Holy Spirit, is our resident instructor, which is why we're told not to quench the spirit. That is, we should oppose, um, we should avoid opposing his leading and his teaching. Why? He's trying to help us navigate through the maze of life where we are. And that's what we need to do. We need to be listening. Am I reading scripture? Have I heard his voice? Is his spirit guiding me through an impression, trying to get me to see or say or do something? I need to become sensitive to those things. I know that sometimes there are people who have been sensitive to those things. And over time, they've kind of become desensitized. They didn't listen as often as they want to. And every now and again, that's why some people believe in what we refer to as a personal prophetic word that, you know, they're waiting for God. Oh, um, you have a word for me? Uh, no, no, no word for you. I just wait till God gives me one. Sometimes it can happen that way. Other times, depending upon what the person's need is, you can actually use these four keys and see that the father has a word for that you can give them. And please, 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 please know this. The word doesn't have to be eight days long, 12 minutes long. Sometimes it's 30 seconds or a minute because he's just trying to get something uh, across to confirm, clarify, or get a person moving in the direction he needs them, to, needs them to move in. So we've taken a look at three of the 12 ways that Yahweh speaks today to make his instruction, direction, and instructions known. Today, this day and age in which we live, we can know and hear his voice. It's most often through scripture, it can be audible, and it involves his spirit's leading. The spirit will not lead us contrary to what the written word has spoken. So we've got to be careful when people come up and play the God card. Well, God told me, okay, if you say that, I'm going to kind of go with you on that. If you say, I think God is saying, or I believe God said, then we can have a conversation and maybe help get clarification on is it God or is it not God? Because guess what? You can think it's him and we can miss it sometimes. 
I've known some people who said, I know it's God. I know his voice. I know he told me to do something. And the end result was not good. I don't think they originally heard what God really intended. They heard something that they kind of intended and they superimposed it upon him. And then they say, well, see, God told him to you know, do this thing and that didn't work out. That's not to say God won't lead us to do some things that don't initially seem to work as we thought it should. Remember Moses? He was told, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And he wouldn't say, Pharaoh, Yahweh says, let my people go. Pharaoh said, no. He went back to God. Hey, he said, no. He said, well, go back again. And he did this. It was not until the 10th time that they were allowed to be released. So I'm saying all this to say, God may lead us to do some things that will maybe that could possibly create more challenges, but the ultimate thing, what he desires is going to come to pass, which is what happened with Israel. The Hebrews were set free from Egypt. More challenges ahead? Yes. Did God speak again to those who were listening and then provide a path? Yes, he did. So here's your exercise. When we're finished today, hopefully sometime within 10 minutes of our finishing the program today, get your pen and paper or your phone, your tablet, and your computer if you want to do it digitally and write, Heavenly Father, please show me a verse of encouragement. Write that out. Heavenly Father, show me a verse of encouragement. And then still the noise around you. See, look for vision for God to show you something with his words, know that he'll speak in a spontaneous way. Thoughts or images or pictures will come to mind. He may give you a Bible reference. He may give you a phrase of that. But whatever he gives you, give about two or three minutes and then write that down. Write it down. I'd love to know what he gives you. So please feel free. I'm requesting you to Send me a text with the reference or the phrase that he gave you. Put it in the chat or put it in the comments if you're on YouTube. I'd really like to hear how he's speaking to you now. Shalom.